I know. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hey there. You're acting a little needy, aren't Just you? Just a little needy. Looks like we got three people viewing this. Yes, we do. Come here. There we go. We're getting Megan and Bella video diary. <laughs> that nice. Wants to go. Well, would it? Easy, easy. <laughs> you're like boning a Marlon. Okay. <laughs> Hey, Mom, if you're watching this, I told you Bella's more crazy than Jesse. Here's your proof, Messiah. <laughs> oh, my God. The younger they are, the younger... Oh, she had butt in my eye. Okay. Are you having fun? Ah. Let me clean your face, Daddy. Ah. I'm going to clean your chin, Daddy. You missed a spot. It's all the dumbest pizza we had. Oh, oh yeah, it's probably them. Okay, bye. You okay? I'll live. I've been through worse. Uh, so, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. This is interesting because you grew up in the show more than I did. I was more of a Gummy Bears, Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh kind of person. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you know more about this show than I do. So it's been I a guess while since I've watched it, but... I've only seen the Cuckoo Cola episode. That holds up fine. Yeah, I... That one's one of the more memorable ones, um, but um, <laughs> I can't hold it in. Okay. I can't hold it in. Okay, Spoiler guys. Spoiler alert. I'm about to spoil something. If you don't want to be spoiled, I am going to give you five seconds to fast forward. Well, well how, how should we let them know we're done spoiling? Maybe put I'll in like a... I'll have like an indicator. Okay, he'll put in an indicator. Okay. okay. Five, four, three... Two, one. Okay, here it comes. Gadget and Zipper! What the? <laughs> a fly and a mouse. And they have fly mouse babies. Instant nightmare fuel. Uh, okay. Because it didn't make sense for me either. Because on the show, wasn't she with one of the other characters? Well, it was implied that she was like back and forth between Chip and Dale. But I think it was supposed to be her and Chip were supposed mm. to be Endgame. And I think... With Dale, so it was supposed sense. to be him and Foxglove. This is why you know more than I Yeah, Foxglove was this bad. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, shipped them. And Chip was with Gadget. Or they weren't, like, actually a couple, but... It was kind of like... Um, Kate from Lost with Sawyer and um, Jack, but without the mind games because Gadget was actually sweet where Kate was just a manipulative little... <laughs> yeah. But we're not talking about Lost. No. No. So yes, um, Dale is my favorite character. Mm -hmm. And I did like that this movie addressed that his character in the show was treated like, sh you know, shit. Yeah. And although I can understand why Chip was mad at him in this movie, I saw both sides. It was like Chip seemed to be missing the point about why Dale was doing what he was doing. And I felt like what Dale did in the beginning of the movie was a cry for help that Chip just did not follow. And, yeah. yeah. But this, this movie was surprisingly really, really good. And frankly, it should be retitled Chip and Dale in the Multiverse of Madness because that was more of a Multiverse of Madness than um, Doctor Strange was. And I did like Doctor Strange, too, but my God, the like Disney must have paid a bunch of money for all of these cameos. Like, you had freaking South Park, you had, um, well, knockoff Simpsons, but it, 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 a lot of stuff. It, it was really... I chunga. Oh my god. <laughs> that, oh my god. The second half of the movie, we were both laughing our asses off. It was just, it was a, it was such a good movie. Like, and I definitely feel like it was a, maybe not a sequel to Roger Rabbit, but it's definitely the same universe. Like, it is definitely the same universe. It definitely feels more like a spiritual successor, because there yeah. were points where I was worried, like, is it going to rehash stuff from that? No, it's not. It's being its own element. And I was worried at a couple of times, because one... When you go this route of doing things self-aware and meta, that can only work in so many different ways. And there's only one movie I can think of where that did work, and that was Dragnet. Because it was in that own universe, it was a continuation of characters 
that were based from the show. It wasn't the actual Joe Friday. It was like Joe Friday's uh, brother or ancestor or something like that. And so that worked. So you had the angle of the tough, bitter cop trying to work in the 1980s and how openly sexualized everything is yeah. and how he's messing with that. And it's a great pairing with Dan Acker and Tom Hanks. Um, I should show you that one at some point. There's a really good scene where they're like trying to get into a cult and they find themselves in a snake pit and they have to drug the snake in order to get out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being evil here! Yeah. Uh, brother. But then you have stuff like 21 Jump Street, which I'm not a fan of. I haven't personally seen it. it. It's Some like it. I don't because of the execution. They make it way too meta, way too obvious. Quick, throw the grenade and say something cool. Voom. Something cool. What did you say? Something cool. Ah! So... Going into this, I was really worried. Um, but I think what sold me on it was the world building in the universe. This shows they had a lot of effort and care into it. Yeah. When you see uh, Chip walking along the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you see, like, <laughs> stars for, like, Squidward and Chung Lee. It's like, okay, this is clearly an entire world they had a lot of effort, a lot of care into to execute. There's even posters for like the most unlikely crossovers, like a reboot of Mrs. Doubtfire as a TV show with Meryl Streep. The one that caught me off guard was Batman vs. E.T. <laughs> I want to see that happen now! What well, did, I don't, E.T. Is... What did Batman do to E.T.? <laughs> and Elliot goes on a rampage. I mean, they, can, they can have Henry Thomas come back for that. I mean, I mean, I still want them to make a movie out of that commercial that they did where E.T. comes back to Earth when he's an adult. And meets his kids. It's like, make a movie! <laughs> Batman, I forgive. <laughs> they could have done better with the E.T. voice, though, because that did not sound like E.T. Uh, that did not sound like E.T. The, the original actress is no longer with I, I know, but it's not that hard to do E.T. I mean, this isn't that good, but uh, e. it's, e. it's, it's still better than it sounded like E.T. forgive. It's like, that's not E.T. Maybe E.T. with a sore throat. I don't care. I, st I still love that joke. And I mean, I did like the I, joke. I, and, and how you see where everyone splits up and they go off in different directions. Yeah. That was interesting. Um, I like how Chip's a life insurance salesman. Dale is doing conventions and trying to get things back on. And a Chip Dale da dancer. Yeah. He's, he's partnering with uh, Tigra and Ugly Sonic. Well, thank you. And Lumiere. That led to some really good possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> burns the money. I didn't need those five dollars. Oh yes, it was great and oh uh, man. And like freaking Peter Pan, because his his backstory actually was a nod to what happened to the kid who voiced him. Yeah, you know, he that started was... he started to grow up. He had acne, and Disney decided to be jerks and fire the poor kid. So funny you should say that because it was unintentional. <laughs> because you you want to know who the original villain was, but there was so much red tape over it they couldn't do it. Who? Yeah. I am not kidding here. If it wasn't Peter Pan, it would have been Charlie Brown. Imagine! Imagine the possibilities! Good grief! The chipmunk's got away again! <laughs> you stupid blockhead Gumby! I would have loved it if it would have been. Yeah, oh, it's a shame they couldn't. It makes Jenny so Pete. much sense. But Peter Pan did work. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it did work. Because they own Peter Pan. Yeah, it, it did work, so. And there wasn't a case where I'm like, ah, I grew up on Peter Pan, this is going to be uncomfortable. It's like, no, I, yeah. And the direction they go in with the mystery and the motivations, it did lead some clever ideas. The bootleg knockoff scheme. Oh my god, that entire sequence. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the movie, it was predictable in some ways, but I think that was deliberate. Like, mm -hmm. the movie was very self-aware, and I think that's what makes it work so well. Yeah. And, you know, I just love the relationship between Chip and Dale. Like, I, I feel like this showcased their friendship way more than the original show did, because I, I mean, they were friends in the original television show, but I always felt like Chip was just kind of a jerk. I think what also works, too, is the leads are John Mulaney and Andy Samberg. I'm not a big Andy Samberg fan, but I'm slowly warming up a little bit more. Um, but the way that they both bounce off each other, it clearly shows that they've done a lot of great work together. Yeah. It's clear that they're a good comedy pairing. I think to make your two leads work, you got to have people that have worked long 
together for such an enormous amount of time to know yeah. how they can bounce off each other and work things like that. And here, I really felt that connection, yeah. especially playing these two. And there were some little nods when they go to their chipmunk voices. Yeah, and angry. That, 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 was, that was cute. That was cute. Like, I wasn't too keen on the voices at first, but as the movie went on, they grew on me. Yeah. And I did like that they had, you know, at least Gadget come back. It's I'm a, not it's sure. It's extended cameo. Yeah, or... I'm not sure what to think of a Zipper's voice. And I'm not sure why they didn't have um, Jim Cummings play Monterey Jack, because Jim Cummings was in this. He did mm. other voices for characters that he played, but I don't know why he wasn't Monterey. That was a little... Weird. I'm a little curious myself. Maybe it's because over time there's certain voices you lose the ability to do. No, maybe. Like, like even to this day, I'm, try, I'm still trying to hold on to Bobcat, but it, it changes so many times. Yeah. Well, I mean, my voice for Susan is a lot different than it was. Mm. I think I've gotten better at the accent. Of but course, J.K. Simmons was. Yeah. Oh, I had a feeling that was him. Captain. What do you think of? Uh, the uh, the police sergeant Ellie, I liked her. Eric Bana, that. I wonder where Eric Bana was going to come in. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it was a star power thing. Yeah, because the Monterey Jack voice was a diff was different than his other voices. Okay, dude, slow down. <laughs> Car flying by the house. This is what I get for living next to a highway. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully the street I live on is tucked away from the main stretch. Like, it's close to the main stretch, mm -hmm. but it's tucked away enough where we don't have to deal with that. Although there are still people that like to drive down maniacs. It's, drive like maniacs. It's like, okay, this is a small street that kids play in, so can you not do that? Okay, <laughs> thanks. So glad we had this conversation. Okay, so I, I knew that was going to be key, like with key. When they go to, like, Main Street, we see Cheese Muppet mm -hmm. Chef... Oh, yes. I thought I recognized it. You could definitely tell that was inspiration for a Swedish chef. I wish it was the Swedish chef. They probably I couldn't. Uh, I know that Disney technically owns the Muppets, but... Yeah, they're trying to be sparing with some of that. Yeah, and I think the Hansons still have a say in some stuff. And I, I couldn't picture cheese. I couldn't picture the Swedish chef being... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like him in jail... He's now the cook in jail because he got thrown in jail. <laughs> He's still chasing that chicken in jail. It's, it's still a creative universe. And yeah. they, they know when to jab themselves. They got Seth Rogen in the Uncanny Valley. Oh, that, that was great. And like freaking Ugly Sonic. Uh, oh, that was great. I'm surprised how they worked that in. Yeah, oh my god, adjust the close-ups of his mouth and both of them were like... Yeah. Like they both do like this... I didn't realize how that connected because you find like the twist with Peter Pan and stuff. It's like, oh my goodness, same thing happened with Ugly Sonic, but it's different. But no, he, he Yeah, but Ugly Sonic right? didn't become a bad guy. No. He didn't let the anger consume him. He just was like, you know what? Fine, I'm Ugly Sonic. I'm going to go with that. Yeah. Some of yeah. them move on relish. No, I was generally surprised. This was definitely a fun flick. Yes. I think it played around a lot more with the universe. Um... This was definitely a step up from last year we had Space Jam 2. I think the big difference is that here, yeah. they're really putting in the effort to create this universe. It's not just, we own this, we own that. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they, they toss some things in the background. Well, like Space Jam 2 was wasted potential, and even though I kind of felt like it had more of a plot than Space Jam 1, as time has passed, I've realized I really don't really like it. And when people were mentioning about it being a LeBron James ego trip, it's like, yeah, I can definitely see yeah. it. Uh, but, like, it just... Because they're only focusing on the IPs that they have, at least in this one, they're really going the extra mile. Even it's just, like... Yeah, they didn't have, like... like even if it's, like, Stan Marsh in the background or someone running around... Yeah, but like, it was still it. actually that way. Like, in Space Jam 2, it wasn't the... It's, like... It, it looked like freaking cheap Halloween costumes. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, when it comes to the Space Jam movies, I'd say the first one is better for nostalgic reasons, and the second one yeah. is better be because it had a better plot. Oh. I'm sorry, I got distracted. I know, I know. It I technically had a better plot, but it still wasn't that good. No. Neither of them are good if you think about it, but... 
here there's definitely way more effort going into yeah, it. Yeah, way, way more. And, like, the animation was really fascinating. Like, with Peter Pan, I some of it you can tell that they had, like, an actual physical person, then they did, like... 3D stuff to have it be like a cartoon. Like, it was still CGI, but it looked like a tune. And I do like how in some cases you can see, like, miniature houses and things like that. So at least it's not like a giant CGI house. No, there's actual, like, (laughs) built. Yeah, and, like, Dale looks... I love that. Dale looked really impressive. Like, the detail in his fur and, like, his eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, And that they still had them do chipmunk things, like, running on all fours. And I know this is in the trailer, but just so I don't give away too much... The scene where they look at, like, the different pieces from the cartoon yeah. characters, I like you can see things like the muzzle, the pink panther, Jimmy Neutron's hair, and things like that. Yeah. There's some really nice touches here and there. Yeah. It, it was really good. Yeah. It was really good. I, I'd say this was definitely a recommendation. Uh, do you think this would have been better if it was released to theaters, or do you think it was better that it was released <sighs> to Disney Plus? I wish they could have done both. Like, maybe have it be in theater. Because I felt like this was theater world. Worthy. It definitely has that theater polish, especially yeah. for the two hundred million dollar price tag it has. Yeah, to it. like it. It was really like you could tell they put a ton of effort into this, like a ton of effort, and it, it was it was a really good movie. Yeah, I'm hoping that maybe they will reboot it, or you know maybe have a show, or maybe do follow up movies. I would be okay if they did follow. Yeah. Even if it's like a series, like maybe them trying to... Get or having them, like you know, that. kind of becoming actual detectives because, mm-hmm. you know... You know what I'd love for them to do? Play more around with this universe. Yeah. It might be really hard to do, but I would love to see what they could do with it. Yeah. There's so much open potential for something yeah. like this that you don't see in today. Yeah. It was great. It was. I would definitely recommend it. Don't give me my Batman vs. E.T. movie! It could work! Because why would Batman go after E.T.? There are many reasons why. But E.T. is just an innocent alien who wants to plant plants. Batman is not. I know, Batman is. <laughs> and it looked like he was the Ben Affleck Batman. Maybe hey, E.T. I, I, yeah, I, I think he was the Ben Affleck Batman. Yeah. It looked like him. I don't know if they actually had Ben Affleck. I mean, they could team up and stop Poison Ivy. Well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. I know I know it's a joke, but... <laughs> yeah, that's not a pairing I want to see. I mean, if you want to, that's that's fine, but... I'm sure people will write fan fiction! <laughs> fan fiction! I can see it now. There's, like, this scene with Chip and Dale, and I'm like, Oh, God, here comes the shippers. <laughs> Because I'm sure there's fic about them being a couple. I mean, I'm sure. If, I mean, if it's, they, it's the internet. I'm sure it I exists. I mean, if they could write a freaking fanfic about Lady Gaga in a toaster. That exists. Mm-hmm. Yes, unfortunately that exists. Oh, my God. My little internet children already reviewed that. First time I'm upset about Snape being with Teletubbies now this exists. I don't know, maybe, they should, maybe there shouldn't be a Batman versus E.T. movie the more I think about it. Oh no, they won't do Batman versus E.T. It'll be Batman does E.T. What about Batman meets E.T.? Like, not yes. versus, just meets. Maybe since he meets E.T. and then they have alien sex. No, 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 no. And then they have bat E.T. babies. No, no. Like, like it's no. Batman's body, but E.T.'s head. No, no, like he parks like next to like the backyard of Wayne Manor and they meet up and stuff and like ooh I actually have a they, cool idea they, for a fan and fic and like, like instead of fight crime well no like he meets him when he's a kid like instead of landing where Elliot is he lands where Bruce is young yeah and maybe E.T. with his tech helps him yeah maybe they like meet up in the cave and stuff yeah maybe I don't know that would be interesting or, or, or instead of Batman it becomes E.T. 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 man <laughs> E.T. Man. It just came out. <laughs> it's better than Extraterrestrial Man. Eh, not as much of a tongue twister. I am vengeance, doink. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the finger. <laughs> it glows. He just does a ah. doink joker in the eyes. Yeah. 
Ouch. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Open my world. Well, tune in next time, whenever that may be. Yeah. You know, to see what other movies are coming out. I know Jurassic uh, World 3 is coming out. I still gotta watch the first two. They looked good. We watched the first one. Yeah, maybe next time. Later. Later.